Avogadro's number. Recall, an at atom's atomic mass, atomic mass, is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the atom. So when you look at periodic tables, you'll see the atomic number up here, the six, and here's the atomic mass in atomic mass units. The unit for atomic mass is atomic mass units. Carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons. One atomic mass unit, abbreviated AMU, is equal to one twelfth the mass of carbon-12, or approximately the mass of one proton or neutron. Protons and neutrons actually have slightly different masses, and that's why this symbol here is not the equal. That's kind of like approximately. That's what that means. What if you wanted to measure the mass of one atom in the laboratory? Would it be possible? Well, a single atom has a very small mass. One carbon atom has a mass of about 2 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. So there's no way you could put one on a scale and measure it. Nothing we have is that accurate or goes to that layer of detail. Also, how would you trap the one atom and know that you had it? So basically, we measure the mass through indirect methods, kind of like the Millikan oil drop experiment, or through mass spectrometry. But you can't measure it directly. That's kind of silly. It would take a whole lot of atoms to give us enough material to directly measure in a lab. So let's start with hydrogen. It has a mass of one atomic mass unit, right? Just has one proton. How many atoms of hydrogen would be needed to make a one gram sample of hydrogen? This many. I'm not even going to try and read that. That's why we have scientific notation. And that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and is called Avogadro's number or a mole. And you can click here, this is a nice video, on how big a mole really is. And we're going to cover that in the next few slides in addition. But don't be scared of it just because it has a funny name. It's just a group of grouping of numbers, like dozen, ream, etc. A dozen means 12 of something. A mole means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of something. So here's just a couple other quantities to make you feel more comfortable. A dozen is 12. Gross is 144. A ream is 500. When you buy paper for your printer, you get a ream. It's got 500 pages in it. And a mole, excuse me, 500 sheets, two pages per sheet. So 100 pages, 500 sheets. And a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. The mole is the SI unit, where SI is System International. I'm sorry, I don't know French that very well, but this is how we do our standards. For example, kilogram is the SI unit for mass, meter is the SI unit for distance, Kelvin the SI unit for temperature, and mole is the SI unit for measuring the amount of particles in a chemical substance. So this picture here, one atom times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gives you one mole of carbon, and this over here is a carbon atom. We can figure out how many moles we have if we know the number of particles we have. So n is the number of moles, little n. Capital N is the total number of particles. And N sub A is Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Basically, you divide the amount you have by Avogadro's number to determine the number of moles. If you know the number of moles, you can move the equation around to find the number of particles. The abbreviation for moles is just mole, M-O-L. If we wanted to know how many moles of gold there are in a sample containing 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold, use the formula where capital N is 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd, that's the number of atoms, and that's given in the problem. N sub A is Avogadro's number, it's a constant, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then N, number of moles, little n. We write the equation, right, right from there. We substitute in our values due to the division, and we have n is equal to 0.5 mole, and mole is abbreviated M-O-L. Now we'd like to know how many particles of lead there are in a 3.2 mole sample. Once again, we have our equation. We have our given this time, 3.2 moles, Avogadro's number, and we'd like to find the number of particles. So you write the equation, and now we need to isolate capital N. So we multiply both sides by n sub a, Avogadro's number, so it cancels on the right, and then we just reverse the equation around. So we have the particles is equal to Avogadro's number times the number of moles, substitute in our values, 
and get a number of 1.93 times 10 to the 24th. Much can be said about the topics of rounding and the use of significant figures. Significant figures are the digits in a value that carry meaningful contributions to its measurement resolution. The use of sig figs, it's an abbreviation for it, will be discussed later in this course. For most calculations, it will be sufficient to round the answer to three digits, not three decimal places, three digits. If an answer is less than three digits, then we'll just leave it with one or two digits.